In this 15 minute tutorial we're going to be going over the basics of navigation and cover some of the different tools you have available to you, mainly focusing on GPSs and reading grid references on the map. When using Ace3 we have a variety of different navigation aids available to us. This includes map tools, microdagger GPS, map, a compass, a watch and a GPS. Now some of these uh, such as the watch, compass, map and GPS are from the base game, whereas map tools and micro dagger are from Ace 3 Another useful tool to bring is the Maglite XL50. This allows you to use the map in complete darkness. However, it will give a small light off your character. Going through our different options we have, if we want to open up our watch, that can be done by pressing the O key on our keyboard. That is O for Oscar. But if we let go, it will disappear again. We double tap it, it will load it up and keep it up. The next key we have is if we press and hold K, it will open up our compass. And again, if we double tap it, it will toggle it so it's now open even if I let go. There's a few other tools we have, including the micro dagger, which can be opened through your self interaction menu and equipment. This has both a smaller version as well as a larger menu available to us. There'll be another video going over how to use this fully, but for now, just be aware it can give us a compass, which we can put down at the bottom. It can also give us a map, which we can use to have a look around areas. And we also have a series of other settings available to us. The next tool we have is the map itself, which can be opened by pressing M. As you can see here, our compass and our GPS also show up on the map. So these can be moved around by clicking and dragging. The map I'm currently on is Tanoa, and I've blacked out most of the map, so we know we're only on this island up at the top here. Now, if you look at the map, you can see it's split up into grids. So in this case, this is 0, 1, 2. If we zoom in, it'll now go to all the numbers between 0 and 1 is the next number. So 05 is halfway between 0 and 1. Then if we look at, uh, for example, 03, if we zoom in again, this will split it down to give us 03, 035, 36 and so on. So on our GPS, on our map, it shows us our current position as a six digit grid reference. So this is kind of like when you're dealing with graphs, you have your horizontal, and then your vertical numbers. So in this case, we have 0, 3, 5, 1, 2, 6. And when you get a digit a series of numbers, which are going to be a grid reference, you always just take the numbers and cut it in half. You have an equal amount for your horizontal and for your vertical. So in this case, we have 0, 3, 5. So if we zoom in more, you can see 0, 3, 5. So we're going to be somewhere down this line here. And then our next line is 1, 2, 6. So we draw that across. We can see where these intersect is on this point here, where these two lines go across. So we have 0, 3, 5 on the horizontal and 1, 2, 6 on the vertical here, where they overlap. Now, this dot is on the corner of four different squares here, isn't it? So Without additional context, we're not really sure which square we're in. However, uh, one thing you always do with grid references is you always go down and left to get your point. So that means we, if we are going from our point to our position, we're up and right somewhere in this, in, which would make us in this square here. So we are somewhere within this square. And if we load up our GPS on our sidebar, you can see that we're just on the very edge, around about there. There we go. So that's marked our position. So now we have our position. Uh, we can try that again for another one. So I have the position of the shed, uh, which we're going to try find. Uh, it's at zero three one 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 nine. So again, if we go to zero three. And we want to find 1, 1. And we know it's going to be somewhere near the top of 1, 1. 
So if we zoom in, we can then go 0, 3, 1 on the horizontal, and we want to go 1, 1, 9 on the vertical, which puts us in this square here. Now, when marked on maps, buildings are marked as rectangles, so they're quite easy to spot, because uh, they te generally tend to stand out. So there's a building here, so this is probably going to be our shed. Uh, another example of a building would be this building here. Or if we look at a more populated area, you can see each individual building and their sort of shades of grey. So, now what we do is we have our two positions on the map, but we have to actually navigate between them. There's a couple of ways we can do this. For example, if we want to travel by road, we know that if we head north and west, we will end up this road here. What we can do then is follow this road down, take a left turn, which will then take us all the way down here and place the shed on our right hand side. The other option we have is we can do just a straight line across. Uh, typically, if you have a vehicle, that's when you'd be using the roads, and if you're walking, you'll be using uh, a straight line instead, generally speaking, or close to. So, since we have a quad bike over here, we're going to be driving. go, we've managed to find the shed. So if I now turn the engine off and get out, and head inside. So, now what we have is a second grid coordinate. Uh, this has been given to us on the screen here. So, 0, 3, 7, 1, 1, 1, 1, 9, 2, 6. If we want to, what we can do is we can go again, we can go 0, 3, 7, uh, is it 1, 1, 9? So 0, 3, 7, 1, 1, 9, we know it's going to be in this square here. If we keep zooming in, we don't really get any more detail than that. So there's a couple options we have available to us. First off, we can just go into that square and we can walk around. However, that square is 100 by 100 metres. And that's quite a chunk of area to be just walking around randomly in hopes of spotting what you're looking for. So, because we have these additional numbers at the end, 1, 1 and the 2, 6, what we can do is if we open up our map, we can get our map tools out. And that's done by self-interacting, map tools, and then show normal or show small. And if we just click and drag, to move this across. We can move these on and for the 1-1 one, one, for, uh, sorry, for the 1-1 one, one, for the x-axis that'll be one spot on here so these are marked 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 so for our 1 it's going to be this first little one here needs to go on the edge and then for 2-6 We'll round it up to three. So one, two, three. It needs to be down here. So if we want to, we could do that and then place a point on this corner here. So call that target two, and that's given us our precise position. And that will be accurate to within a ten by ten meter square. So that's a little bit more accurate for us to be using as a spot to walk to. The other option we have is if we go into our self interaction equipment and open up our micro dagger. We can click on the clock at the top to open up a menu. 
and we click waypoints and add. Now what we can do is we can type in the grid reference which we're trying to go to. So in this case it is 0, 3, 7, 1, 1, then 1, 1, 9, 2, 5. Hit OK. So we're going to call this target 2. Hit OK. So now this has added it in as a waypoint on our uh, micro dagger. So we can set that as our waypoint and it will give us on our compass the bearing we need to head along and a precise distance and this will be constantly updated as we move around. So this is a very useful navigational aid for if you get given a grid reference you can just type it in and immediately be able to walk towards it. If we go onto the map tab on the bottom we'll see it's also placed a pin on the map so quite close to where we got with our uh, map tools and if we go onto the first tab it will show it on this bottom part here again it will show the target bearing from our position, the range to it, the elevation of the point, and then we have our elevation here which you can use to calculate the difference. So that in this case that's 59 meters above median sea level. So I'm going to switch it back to the compass, hit escape and that will minimize it down to the bottom right. Then we can now use that to take a quick jog 500 meters there. Right. Get my quad bike, and I'll just actually cut out the fact that I've referenced the jog. So now we've arrived near to our location, what we can do is we can either use our GPS on the left or our micro dagger to guide us in towards the final spot. So it takes us to roughly this tree. If you look, our micro daggers are actually pointing to you pretty much on top of the exact spot, which is pretty accurate really. Uh, if you compare that to, if we look on the uh, minimap, that's taking us sort of further this way, but either way, both methods are extremely close for locating a specific point. There we go. That covers using a map and GPS's in order to navigate. This is what you're going to have to use for 90% of the time in Arma 3. Uh, it's very rare that you actually have to navigate by compass and map tools. Uh, however, I will be doing a separate video to cover that topic.